Hello, everyone. Oh. <laughs> My name is Jason Kircher. I serve as the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Wheaton College. You've made it to an Equitas Fellows Program webinar, an expansion of our ex inclusive program here at Wheaton College, and we're really excited to share more about it with you. We have a number of faculty on the call, as well as students of Wheaton College who have been a part of the Equitas program since the very beginning, and we're really excited to share more about it with you. Well, let's turn it on over to our Equitas Fellows Program itself, and let me introduce to you our Dean of Social Sciences at Wheaton College, Dean Brian McGraw and Equitas Fellows Program Director. Welcome and thanks for joining us, Dr. McGraw. Thanks, Jason. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, so in fall of 2017, uh, we enrolled here at Wheaton, our first group of fellows, in what we were calling the Equitas Fellows Program in Urban Leadership. Um, in addition to offering students academic scholarships, which of course everybody is interested in, the program sought to cultivate in those students the knowledge, skills, and interests that would prepare them to serve and lead as Christians across the range of opportunities and challenges associated with urban life. Um, we have since enrolled three more fellows, three more classes of fellows, and this year we'll graduate uh, the, that first class. Uh, the Equitas Urban uh, Program was so successful, both in terms of bringing top-notch students to Wheaton and what it offered to those students that the college decided to expand the program and had two more themes uh, starting in fall 20, 2022. Uh, you'll have a chance just a minute to hear from the coordinators for those themes and give you some, a little more details about what that, what that looks like. Um, what those look like. Uh, but in general, just know that each theme brings together a select group of students uh, around a particular set of interdisciplinary questions and offers them, in addition to academic scholarship, of course, a series of common courses, reading groups, funds for summer experiences, and much else. I like to think of the Equitas Fellows Program as offering three opportunities, three sets of opportunities. First, Equitas offers students to engage a set of important interdisciplinary questions over the course of their time at Wheaton, in addition to their declared major. So this isn't a program where you take a class or two the first, uh, the first semester or the first year, and then you're kind of off on your own uh, to sort of navigate college, uh, nor is it a program where we pull you out of general education classes and you take sort of specialized uh, uh, sort of gen ed requirements. Instead, we, have, we offer sort of a, a carefully crafted curriculum I don't think I can say that fast uh, three times, uh, that will allow you to dig deeply into a set of questions that you're interested in across your whole career here at Wheaton. Second, Equitas offers students an opportunity to do that digging in the company of others. Fellows are part of a cohort. That means you're in classes together, um, you're in reading groups together, you're on excursions together, you have a chance to build deep and lasting intellectual community with other Christian students similarly interested in these questions. And third, Equitas offers students the opportunity to put things into practice, whether through internships, research work, senior projects, or whatever else um, might be a part of a cohort. Part of what binds the different Equitas themes together is the sense that they represent particularly vivid examples of how the liberal arts are indeed useful in the world beyond academia. And it's an opportunity to sort of uh, participate in that. You know, when I, um, when I interviewed at Wheaton uh, for my position almost 15 years ago uh, this month, um, I asked the, my department what was the best part of Wheaton. Without hesitation, they answered the students. And it's true. Wheaton students are smart, they're engaged, they're earnest, and they really desire to be transformed by their time at here, by their time here. And Indeed, they look to be sort of transformed so that they can go on after Wheaton to be agents of transformation of the world around them. When I think about what Equitas has already done and what it will do in the future, that's what I think will be its greatest legacy in encouraging and equipping top-notch students to study deeply, build community, and serve well in wherever the Lord calls them. Um, so we're super excited about this program. We're super excited about the uh, expansion. And what I want to do now is have our three coordinators uh, who run the particular themes give you a taste of what, what you might expect um, in each one. So the first one will be Dr. Uh, Catherine Monero. Um, Dr. Monero? Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Dr. Catherine Monero. I am a geology 
professor, and I'm also the theme coordinator for Equitas Sustainability. In Equitas Sustainability, we're going to bring students together to look at what it means to use resources well now and to make sure that we have resources well into the future. And a couple of highlights. Well, yes, you will take classes that help you understand exactly what sustainability is and how we do it and apply it. Um, one of the things that you would get to do in this program is go to Sustainability Summer at Wheaton in the Black Hills. So you get to spend eight weeks living and learning in community and taking classes where you do a hands-on sustainability project that improves Wheaton's campus in the Black Hills. In addition to that, Alongside of coursework, there's also a cohort project where you work together with others in your cohort to design and implement a sustainable system on Wheaton's campus that then prepares you when you're a senior to work on an independent project that integrates with your major and allows you to look at how sustainability factors in no matter what major you might be. This lets you get a holistic multidisciplinary look at what it means to be sustainable, whether you're a science major or you're in the conservatory or you're in the humanities. And uh, our hope is that it will also bring energy to campus that will help improve sustainable systems. We just uh, installed a shed for our new campus garden and you can be a part of that by being a part of Equitas Sustainability. So we're looking forward to welcoming our first cohort in the fall. I'll pass it on to our next theme coordinator, Dr. Kreiner. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Tiffany Kreiner, and I'm so excited to share with you about public uh, humanities and arts. Uh, the theme, Public Humanities and Arts, like its name says, is designed to equip students to bring the languages and history and literature uh, and arts into the public sphere in various ways. We are helping students learn how to move from the very sort of idea having through the design process all the way through implementation and evaluation of their own projects. And the sort of key distinctive for our cohort is the studio. What we do is for the first two years of your time at Wheaton, we meet together in the fall weekly for a, a studio course where we, yes, read together, but we practice mini projects in lots of fields of public humanities. And we invite experts in the field who are working in the field and learn how to host them and make connections with them uh, to learn how to do our work better. Alongside this, you, if you're joining our cohort, will be being trained, right, in uh, other coursework for the the Equitas Fellowship, but also in your own way, to be uh, learning the necessary skills to help you bring good history making, uh, good literature uh, processing and uh, writing into uh, those public spaces. Uh, so the plan is that we move from a kind of group project um, in studio uh, associated with our campus core book into a public philosophy project, then into an internship in your own chosen area or field, and then finally into senior projects. Um, along the way, we also are planning an international public humanities experience in Querétaro, Mexico, uh, in which we will meet with um, Mexican artists and public humanists there to uh, study with them, help uh, with projects that they are working on um, and sort of experience internationally the sorts of questions and problems that we'll also be working on uh, in our own contexts. It's a kind of studio, a gathering of creative artists and humanists that is able to create as exciting and broad a set of projects as the members of the cohort itself. So we welcome trombonists and ancient Greek speakers and scientists who are interested in sort of the story by the bedside. There's so many applications of the public humanities. And I just want to welcome you and say, come, come study with us, come make things with us. I'll turn it over now to Dr. Krista Tuli. Hello, so good to be here tonight. So uh, my name is Dr. Krista Tooley. I am an urban studies and anthropology professor here at Wheaton. And I have the pleasure of coordinating the Equitas Urban Leadership Program, which currently has four cohorts, as Dr. McGraw noted. 
enrolled. So I have actual Equitas students here to, uh, yeah, to, that I've been able to engage with, which has been a, just a wonderful joy. So I am really excited to have this opportunity to, to coordinate Equitas Urban Leadership. And I think it's important to note that there's no program comparable to it in the country. This program takes advantage of one of Wheaton's unique assets, its proximity to Chicago, and it allows you as students to build on a foundation of more than 20 years of relationships with organizations, communities, and individuals that the college has cultivated in the city. Through urban leadership, students engage pressing issues like poverty, food insecurity, housing, and economic development through both academic study and personal experience. And learning about the particular challenges and opportunities that cities present, students develop solutions-based ethical reasoning rooted in evangelical public theology. You'll participate in a program of leadership development through which you're connected to individuals and organizations throughout Chicago. And you'll gain exclusive opportunities for interaction with speakers who are brought in from around the country to inform our thinking about issues in which cities take a leading role. Throughout the program, we will think and work together to identify possibilities for Christian innovation to produce biblically informed solutions to these issues. Supported by Wheaton faculty and staff, you'll spend a semester living, learning, and gaining vocational experience while interning in Chicago in our Wheaton and Chicago program. In addition to a funded summer experience working in an international urban context, such as Bergen, Norway, Quito, Ecuador, or Santiago de Compostela, Spain. Throughout the entire interdisciplinary program, students bring their own vocational interests, programs of study and experiences to a joint cohort project of interpreting, exploring, and ultimately seeking to shape the urban centers of political, economic, and social life in the US and beyond. The interdisciplinary nature of the Equitas program equips students for the kinds of innovative thinking and leadership that will be required to address the complexity of the issues and opportunities that cities present as you cultivate your own capacities for faithful presence and transformative influence along your vocational journeys. And now that you've had the chance to hear from uh, three uh, Equitas theme coordinators, we have two students on the call now, our current uh, Equitas urban leadership uh, from two different Equitas urban leadership cohorts. So I'll turn it over to them to share from their experiences. So Amelia Miller, thanks very much. Good evening, everyone. My name's Amelia. I'm from just outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm a junior here at Wheaton and I'm studying math and economics. So I'm a second generation Wheaton student. So when I was starting my senior year, Wheaton was pretty close to the top of my list of schools, but it was the Equitas program that was the deciding factor in me wanting to attend Wheaton. And all of the classes I've attended here have been amazing, but there's something that's been really special about my Equitas classes, because I'm getting to interact with a group of 10 academically motivated peers from just a variety of different majors. So the conferences or the, um, the discussions that we're having are broadening my horizons and allowing me to think about a lot of really important questions in an interdisciplinary manner. I've also really appreciated the Equitas lecture series, which has brought um, scholars to Wheaton's campus that are thinking about the same questions that I am, but I'm able to learn so much from them because they have so many unique experiences and perspectives about the unique challenges and beauties of urban life. But probably my favorite part of Equitas has been getting to know the neighborhood of Woodlawn. So I began my Wheaton experience in Woodlawn as a part of Urban Passage, which is Wheaton's pre-orientation program. And I'm currently there studying and living as a part of the Wheaton and Chicago program. I've been able to intern with a microfinance firm, do research alongside a community partner, and just spend time exploring the city, riding the L and walking through neighborhoods. And it's been really impactful just to see all of the things that I've been learning about in class play out around me. Equitas has been a great bridge between my academic interests and my passion for justice and for seeing what God is doing in the city. Now I'll pass it over to Jude. Hey guys, um, my name's Jude, um, Jude Johnson. I'm a sophomore at Wheaton and I'm studying English and then most likely double majoring in art history. Um, so uh, this is fun learning about this, all these different uh, disciplines, like I did the public arts and humanities one. Um, 
I'm just now learning about that myself, which is, this is very cool. Um, so um, like Dr. Tuli said, I'm in one of the urban studies cohorts here. Um, and I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, just kind of what my like personal experience has been. Um, I'll talk about some of the more like formal elements, but then also just kind of my personal um, experience being in Equitas. So um, essentially like, like Dr. McGraw has said and Dr. Tooley said, um, so I'm in a cohort of like around 15 people, um, which is I think larger than they'll be in the future. I think our cohort was the largest one. Um, but it's been a really cool opportunity. So I'm an introvert and I came in as like a very kind of nervous freshman um, into first year seminar and being in a class with 15 people that I knew I was going to be with for the next four years um, really motivated me to like develop deep relationships with these people. And um, it gave just a, a certain like instantaneous community, um, which was a real blessing. Um, and aside from that, it was also nice having a group of people um, that shared a common interest in cities. Um, so I, obviously it's urban leadership. So um, that, that is the focus of the program, but it's just very cool to, the entire program is interdisciplinary. I have people from, you know, want to go into nursing to people who want to do urban studies to people like me who want to do English. Um, and we're all in a cohort together. And so you get to see how people and their love for cities interact with all of these different disciplines, which um, is very, especially like is very liberal artsy, um, that's not a word, but um, is it, it's a very cool experience to see. So, um, and then I think a, a second point that I would just say about the cohort is that um, equitas means justice and fairness and equity in Latin. Um, and as I'm sure many of you know, um, there are a lot of, of injustices in the world. Um, and a lot of those issues can be really hard to deal with um, at a personal level. And so being in a cohort, um, you really, you get to discuss a lot of these hard issues that are facing our world right now, especially in urban environments. And um, you don't have to struggle with those alone. You get to struggle with them in community, which I feel like that's how God's designed us um, to work. We're not meant to walk through those things alone. So thanks for letting me share. Thanks, Jude. And thank you, students and faculty, for sharing a bit more. Now, we're going to turn over to Q&A session, a chance to engage with your questions and learn more about the program and answer your questions specifically. But I just want to give a little bit of process information now to talk about how, if this sounds at all exciting to you, or you'd like to learn more about how this could supplement your scholarship opportunity, or just how these faculty and programs could engage with your Wheaton experience. If any of that sounds of interest to you, then what should you do? So real brief, I'll talk some process, and then we'll turn it over to you for questions. To be considered for Equitas, you'll need to do two things. First, apply for admission. I'm sorry to say you cannot join Equitas if you do not come to Wheaton College. I know, groundbreaking, I'm sure, uh, but you do need to apply for admission, and you'll need to do so by January 15th. That is our regular decision one application deadline. For full consideration of the program, we need all students to apply by January 15th for admission to Wheaton College. Second, you'll submit your Equitas interest form. That also needs to be submitted by January 15th. And the interest form ensures that we know which interdisciplinary themes you'd like to be considered for. We recognize that it's your program of interest, your programs of study, and the interdisciplinary questions that you have yourself. And we wanna make sure that those are tied together for you and the programs that you're interested in pursuing at Wheaton College. Those two items, your application for admission and that interest form will serve as the initial basis for consideration. And then we'll invite a, a substantial group of students, not everyone, but a solid number of students to submit what we're, we're going to call finalist essays. This is where you'll address a topic related to the themes explored by each cohort that you're interested in. So again, if you're not interested in every cohort, totally fine, but you will need to address a little bit more of that deep question, that interdisciplinary approach for the particular cohorts you're looking to explore as well. And after a deep review from our Committee of Equitas Fellows Coordinators and Program Directors, we will actually turn around and select 15 students for each cohort. That means a total of 45 Equitas Fellows will be joining us this fall. And Equitas Fellows will not only be named an Equitas Fellow and join that cohort, they'll then use the next four years at Wheaton College to earn their Equitas Certificate in combination with any other program that they're studying at the college. 
and of course, receive a total of $20,000 in academic scholarships to attend Wheaton College each year. So that's a bit about process, a little timing elements there too. January 15th is the deadline both for application for admission, as well as the interest form submission. In February, we plan to invite students to submit their finalist essays and students will be notified of their status either as an Equitas Fellow or otherwise at Wheaton College by March 15th. I wanna make sure that you have lots of clarity to decide should you be admitted to Wheaton College with at least six weeks to decide of where you're going to enroll. And of course, if you're admitted to our program, we hope here um, and before our May 1st decision deadline. So for now, next step is really simple. If you haven't applied for admission yet, you do need to do that. January 15th is our next application deadline. I would just encourage you to use Christmas break, do finals now, get that over with. And over Christmas break, make sure to apply for admission. You can do so at wheaton.edu slash apply. And while you do that, or if you've already applied for admission, or if you've already been admitted to the college and looking to pursue Equitas, you'll need to submit the interest form and you'll make sure you are considered for the selective program as well. Now let's turn over to a couple questions. I'll be monitoring in the chat, but I am gonna move the spotlight to make sure that we can open up to questions all together as well. If you've got a question, go ahead and raise your hand. Um, if you haven't done that before, you can use that in the reactions. I'll make sure to call on you. You can unmute if you'd like, or you can direct questions into the chat. Send them to the whole group so that we can all see those questions together. We've got two questions uh, come through for me. First from Jacob, what is the acceptance rate for the program? Uh, again, the cohort numbers are gonna be a little different, but because of our previous experience, we can kind of get a sense for it. The acceptance rate is under 10%. We've typically had a couple hundred students apply back when we had one cohort. We do expect that number to increase given the expanded programs that are available. And again, we're looking to nail down to about 45 students to come on through. Uh, Dean McGraw, any comment on acceptance rate or kind of numbers as you imagine those coming through? Well, I just think it depends on how many students actually apply. So we'll see. I mean, we we expect we aim at around 15 students uh, per theme is sort of what we're, we're hoping to sort of have. It's a nice group where you have a sort of a common class together. You can get to know one another, but not, you know, not too small. Um, uh, and um, and so it, it is it is highly competitive. Um, and but it's uh, but but not not crazy. Uh, Louisa, you raise your hand. Please go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Sorry, I just had to figure out the audio. Um, I'm just wondering, um, you have this amazing program along with the Human Needs and Global Resource Program. Do these programs conflict? How, um, how reasonable, how realistic is it for students to pursue both? Um, I know one of our students on the panel um, is doing um, Wheaton in Chicago and this, so it sounds like Wheaties do pursue a lot, but just wondering how realistic it is. It's a great question. Dean McGraw or one of our faculty, maybe you can take that one on. I'd love to just mention that we have specifically designed our programs to work with hunger and other opportunities. I was actually just talking to an uh, ancient languages major today and sort of calculating, okay, if we have this requirement, how much more to get a minor, how much, we, we're thinking all the time about how to make possible the rich array of programs, you know, for students who want to do lots of things. And hunger, I can promise you, we've gone over line by line to make sure it's possible. In fact, students will, for public and arts will probably uh, use uh, hunger at their internship for the program and maybe even consider some of their senior project work in uh, conjunction with the hunger program. So uh, that's a great question, Louisa, and we're really excited to say, yes, you can. <laughs> for those who don't know what our hunger program or human needs and global resources is, it's a longstanding legacy program at Wheaton College where students apply to be considered for a certificate program at the college with a capstone of doing about a six month internship in a developing country in the global south. They typically will intern uh, or do a research project with an NGO, a community group, nonprofit. It depends both on their level of interest and our many site programs. Uh, it's incredible. And the experiences they bring both to our community and the impact of partnership that's experienced around the world um, is really quite exciting. And it is exciting also to be able to do that as part of the Equitas program. Lila sent a question that I wanna make sure everyone can know is her question was, can you apply for more than one cohort? Yes, you can. Again, the key to that is just marking on your interest form that you are interested in one, two or three cohorts. 
And depending on how many you're interested for, you'll be considered for all of them. Um, students who submit finalist essays later on will be asked to rank choice them. It is important that we do understand what your preferences are through that process. Um, but just at the initial interest form stage, we just wanna know, are you interested in one, two or three? Help us understand that. So not only can we manage expectations for uh, the program, but also make sure we're inviting students who want to be a part of those programs uh, to engage directly. Great. Um, Jade asked a great question. Over the course of four years, what will you accomplish? Just like what would be the kind of key like uh, milestone moments that would happen in the Equitas Fellows Program? Um, how about we start with some of the faculty thematic coordinators? Um, uh, Dr. Tooley, do you want to start and then we can kind of do a round the horn? Sure, sure. So the, um, they have, there's a final project uh, for the Equitas Urban Leadership Cohort that everyone completes. And it's a project that's very flexible according to major and according to what your experiences are. So to the hunger question, uh, hunger also as a part of that program has an uh, independent research project and that, that can serve uh, in integrating the Equitas work, you can integrate that into your hunger independent research project and then uh, that can serve as your uh, Equitas, um, as your Equitas final project. But you know, there's a number of things that you get through this. You get uh, you know, leadership development, you get connected to various folks in Chicago, both alumni and you know, others, in the, um, others in the city. And you get, so you get vocational experience, you get uh, personal uh, you know, mentoring through the director. And in addition to the peer relationships that everyone's been talking about, you really do get uh, um, you know, a very focused uh, you know, academic environment to work through, uh, you know, as Dr. McGraw was saying, these sets of questions that tend to um, kind of be themed, can, tend to be grouped thematically here. So it's, um, yeah, there's a number of you know, various academic, experiential, vocational, and final project uh, you know, specific goals that you accomplish throughout this program. And in the end also, uh, it will be transcriptable as well. So it will also, the proof of the Equitas program will also be on your transcript so that you can tell other people and show them on your transcript about this amazing program in which you participated. That's great. Uh, Dr. Kreiner, how about you next? Thank you so much. Um, a lot of the Equitas themes have pieces in common. So you might hear accomplishments that sound similar across uh, the cohorts. And I will say that for public humanities and arts, um, the the proof of what you accomplish is right there in the public space. So year one, we designed from scratch a project um, to engage the public in our core book. Year two, we bring philosophy um, into public spaces. We're investigating prison spaces, elder care spaces, um, uh, designing it through the cohort itself to make this project happen. Um, your internship project will be in an area of your choice, your senior project, an even more focused version of that. And of course, they vary so greatly, right? We're talking uh, and museum exhibitions and community history projects and um, uh, shared art zones and education uh, transformation. You know, I'm just uh, brainstorming here, but what you accomplish is the thing that you make. Um, some of that is together at first with scaffolding and help and design training, right? Um, uh, and the sorts of training that you will need to make good projects in those areas, right? Um, but then also, um, the, the projects themselves. Uh, I would say too that like in urban leadership, networking is a big part of humanities uh, and arts certificate in the sense that in order to make public projects, you need to network with the public, right? You need to build relationships with communities to do good work. Um, and so we practice that from the very beginning. Um, and so you learn how to engage for humanities majors, especially there's a little stereotype about the introversion and like it's a little scary sometimes uh, to engage with the public. So, so we try together, right? Like we have this community of support and um, we learn how to do that from mini projects on big ones. And so I think of those as some of the major things that you get to accomplish, um, the intangibles of these sorts of relationships, friendships, intellectual um, sort of spurrings on uh, are also there. 
great. Uh, Dr. Manero, just I know many of these constellations are similar, right? There's similar themes and maybe one or two key accomplishments that might differ in your uh, theme. Yeah, one of the big things that I think of right away is hands-on practical skills. So with sustainability, many, many times it's being able to design and implement, actually do something about a problem. So we have students uh, this past summer who went to Wheaton in the Black Hills and they installed solar panels that are providing the security lights on campus. There's a real tangible thing that they can walk away and say, I learned how to do some circuitry and I have a system that's in place and helping future students in a more sustainable way. And so you'll do that uh, in a guided way your first summer and then in a cohort way as you work with the peers and then finally in an independent way as a senior. So you progress to being able to do that uh, in a guided to all the way to an independent way. And so that uh, is a real distinctive that I hope students walk away with. The other big one is students are asked to develop a Christian ethic of creation care. So from your first class, you'll try and take a stab at it, and then you'll revisit that later in the program and come back to it and see how you've grown and developed over those four years. And so we really hope that you can see the growth and accomplishment and it's designed in the program so you can recognize it in yourself. Perfect. I'm going to answer one real quick question and then Lexi, we'll turn it over to you. Abby asked a question about the merit aid, the academic scholarship aid total. To be very clear, the Equitas Fellows Scholarship uh, would be supplemental. That means that students, if they have received other academic scholarships to Wheaton College, would get an increased scholarship so that your total amount of academic merit scholarships to attend Wheaton College would be $20,000. Uh, as an example, just to be clear on that, we offer presidential scholarships ranging from $10,000 to $16,000 at the time of admission. Let's say an Equitas Fellow was selected and they'd already received a $14,000 academic scholarship, a presidential scholarship. The Equitas Fellows Program would supplement that with an additional $6,000 and as one, again, of those select cohort Equitas Fellows students, you'd have a total of $20,000 in academic scholarships to enroll at Wheaton College. Uh, Lexi, I saw you put your hand down. Is that because I answered your question or because you have your question, you're ready for it? I'm ready for my question. My Great, question is, are there any Equitas functions that are purely social in nature? Great question. Dean McGraw, you look, you got excited I was about say, that maybe, one. Maybe Dr. Tooley would be good at that since she has those. But yes, I think I think there are some uh, some social excursions that might happen with the with the Equitas Fellows. Dr. Tooley, any that you've got planned for the year or ones that have come up? And then maybe mm -hmm. we can see, I don't know if Amelia or Jude, if you've got one that would be helpful to talk about as an actual experience to share with the students on the call. Yes, I know. I know Jude does uh, for sure from uh, from this semester. So I won't. I won't take any of his. But uh, we did just have uh, an Equitas Christmas brunch actually, just over the um, last weekend, and we got all the four cohorts together. And the provost of the college came and spoke to us all, and we just had a good time <laughs> eating really good food, socializing, uh, singing a few carols, and uh, you know, eventually moseying on our way. But so we'd like to get together socially because this is an important thing. And usually actually in you know, uh, years that have not been uh, affected by COVID previously, this has been an event that's often done in the city. And so there's typically a kind of a kickoff dinner that we do where we bring everyone together to um, you know, a location in the city, bring together members of our advisory board, our, uh, the Center for Urban Engagement's advisory board. So these are folks, uh, again, professionals and leaders in the city who come to do that uh, as well as our supporting faculty. And so it's social, but it's also, again, we've always got in mind what's the value added that we're bringing here too. So whenever, whenever I'm involved in the planning, we're also bringing in some of our other partners into that socializing so that we're also introducing you to new folks. And then there also are uh, student social coordinators that emerge in the cohort. Julie, let's hear from you. I, I mean, it was just, teased for us. So why don't you tell us like what happened this semester or something that's coming up that'd be helpful for us to know about. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm glad Lexi you asked this question because uh, this is something I wanted to talk about. So like I said, I'm studying uh, English and art history. Um, so uh, if if you have not heard, uh, English had or Wheaton has an excellent art history professor, uh, Dr. Matthew Milliner, and he um, recently gave us a tour of the Chicago Loop, which is like um, just like 
it's like a loop of streets in downtown Chicago. And he gave us an architectural tour. I'm talking about um, different buildings in the Chicago area. What's the history behind them? Um, how were they constructed? You know, who designed them? Um, how do they fit within the city and the history of the city? Um, and then how does that relate to our Christian faith? Um, so that was, for me, I was like totally geeking out because it's very fun. Um, but yeah, and then other, just something that comes to mind, it, there's official social gatherings um, for sure, but then like you're going to become friends with the people in your cohort. So there's a lot of like informal stuff. Like I try to get dinner with people from my cohort fairly regularly, just because I enjoy hanging out with them. So great. Lexi, thanks for that question. Uh, Levi had a question, which I think is, is an interesting one. Love to hear it. Both faculty share about it. And maybe Amelia as a senior, you can kind of reflect on how that question's worked out. He's heard a lot about the great peer relations, the dynamics, but could you talk more about the leader's relationship is with each group? Do you see mentorship with groups and individuals or are they interacting aside from meetings for projects? So seeing that kind of leadership development track, which is just a hallmark of Wheaton College anyway, how does that maybe come a little bit more to fruition because of the Equitas Fellows Program? Well, maybe start with uh, Dr. Tooley or Dean McGraw, and then we can maybe hear from Amelia, your kind of reflection on that. Sure, that's a great question. Yes, so uh, in addition, you know, we basically we get to know the students as uh, Jude was saying in, um, or actually Amelia was saying in uh, Urban Passage. So we get to know everyone at the start of the year and we have this kind of uh, informal time that we're getting to know folks personally. And then there's a, um, a course at the start of the freshman year as well that's just Equitas students. And so through that, we really begin to uh, to get to know one another, to read together, to learn together. And uh, then the sophomore year, especially, uh, there's a, another cohort experience, the sophomore year reading group, where we're meeting together regularly, going through these readings, working through them uh, in a way that's uh, not tied to papers that we're writing. So it's really about the development of, you know, the life of the mind and really, you know, reflecting on our own experiences in relationship to these readings. And then in addition to that, I always encourage students to come to my office hours. I'm always uh, you know, seeking opportunities to get lunch with students, to get coffee, to just check in, hear how things are going. So the way that that mentorship goes, there's not an additional structure because we don't want to impose another requirement on students' time, but we make sure that we you know, are, you know, I guess I'm speaking somehow in the royal we, I make sure that uh, you know, to make myself available here uh, to students and, you know, reach out, check in on them, uh, you know, check on things for senior projects. Right now I'm checking in with students regularly and just having them come meet with me, hear how things are going and brainstorming with them uh, and providing resources as I can. So, uh, and I'm meeting with another student this Saturday to talk about a, a major kind of vocational and uh, sense of calling shift that he's going through right now. So it's those sorts of things that, uh, you know, those are just the relationships that are able to kind of be added onto the scaffolding of the shared courses and uh, the shared experiences. Great, thanks for that. And maybe Amelia, just anything you wanna either point out as an experience to affirm that or a different angle on that question? Yeah, so I think some of the things that I've really appreci appreciated from Equitas is this unique opportunity to really get to know professors, especially as a freshman. That was something that I had that was unique among my peers is that I was able to know the urban studies professors very well. A lot of that is in class. Even though it's a class, the first year seminar course for Equitas is so much fun and you really get to know the other students and the professor and you're just having these like crazy wild conversations. Every time I left class, I was just like, wow, I learned so much from my professor and for the peers there, from the from the peers there. And then also the informal things are wonderful um, being invited into the director's house and just having that element of hospitality. And then something I've also appreciated is that the experiences that you're having with Equitas, the director comes with you. I was thinking about how as a part of Wheaton in Chicago, I attended the Christian Community Development Association Conference and Dr. Tooley was there. And so it was fun to hear her reflections on the conference as I was experiencing it and to have her alongside us for meals. And so it's just a really unique opportunity to get to know some of the amazing professors at Wheaton. Awesome. I think we've got time for maybe two more questions. If you have not had your question answered, we'll try to get to it. I'll also make sure to copy all the questions and reach back out after in the next week to answer your questions too. Um, 
but the first one I saw from Caitlin, and I thought this was helpful too, could be a good one for Amelia also to answer given your kind of connectivity to the students. But the question was, what was the most or is the most impactful project being done through the program? And maybe there's just an opportunity to reflect on people's final internships, final papers, final projects that are kind of going on in the cohorts right now. Um, and Dr. Tooley, I'm sure you have a, a good view on that too. So I can discuss a little bit about the community-based research class that's a part of the Equitas experience in Wheaton in Chicago. And so I've been able to partner with Sunshine Gospel Ministries and they're our host in Wheaton in Chicago. And they have just been so amaz amazingly generous to us, especially in giving me this opportunity. Um, I get to apply my math skills um, to work on a research project. And we're currently looking at police surveillance technology in the neighborhood. And so I've been able to partner with the city of Chicago, Sunshine Gospel Ministries, and a math faculty here at Wheaton. And so it's just been really amazing how integrated it is. I'm thinking about the questions that Equitas is bringing up, but it's also an amazing major your opportunity that's going to be really helpful when I look for um, what I want to do for career or grad school. And so it's been really valuable because it is not only impactful for me, but I've also been able to see how it's been helpful to Sunshine. Um, we had a meeting with some of their staff members yesterday, and one of um, the people in leadership there came over and was just thanking me for my um, willingness to help with this project. And I was like, I have gained so much. So it's just been a really beautiful and wonderful experience to work with them. Great. Thanks for that. Uh, Dr. Tooley, anything else to add on or? Sure, I can just, I'm aware of time, but a couple of uh, senior projects that are going on right now, we've got uh, a student who started a peer mentoring group on campus and who has created a, a cabinet. So that mentoring group will be sustained after she leaves. Um, I've also got another student who is uh, right now uh, passage ha as you know students may have heard is expanding here on campus and so as a part of the expansion in particular of urban passage uh, this one student is working as the mediator between the center for urban engagement urban passage and partners in the city to help basically expand a plan uh, that will allow uh, urban passage to expand and uh, accommodate the you know larger numbers of students so very impactful for the college uh, and what she's doing and uh, we've got you know, other students doing uh, honors English theses and uh, another student who's developing a new economic syllabus that she'll be giving to her economic supervisor. So yeah, just engaged at lots of different levels of you know, the college and, and community. That's great. And uh, this actually gets to maybe uh, Esther's question. Um, you, Krista, you were just talking, Dr. Tooley, you were just talking about some of those uh, ways that those projects are fitting both for their actual majors and connected to that big interdisciplinary theme and question that's being explored for more than one year. Um, definitely invite all the faculty to engage with this question. Esther's question was, are Equitas internships major specific? She gave an example, if you're in the interstitial classroom experience for an education major. Um, maybe we can start with uh, Dr. Monero, how you might be hearing about what those internships or projects might be both for sustainability, but then even actually applied to the majors that are represented in a diverse cohort. Yeah, so for Equitas Sustainability in particular, it would mostly be our independent project that could be very tailored to whatever the student's interests are. Our hope would actually be that you would take something you were planning to do anyway, or that's a part of what your desire is to study that major and to use those skills in a way that then interacts with this big question that you've been asking about. You don't have to though. That's the beauty of it. You could decide that you know, this is going to be my senior honors thesis for English. This is going to be my senior honors thesis for geology. And it has sustainability themes. And that would totally work. Or you could do hunger. And that would totally work. Or you could decide that you're going to be uh, and run for a position in student government and be the executive vice president of sustainability. And that would also work. So it's really flexible and it's designed that way so that as a Wheaton student, you can grow the skills that you came here to grow. We want it to be additive to let you look at these big things that you're interested in while also exploring the skills that you want to grow and develop. That would be our hope and our dream actually for you. Great. Dr. Kreiner, I saw you shake, nodding your head. Absolutely. Any other comments or perspective given the, the public humanities and the arts theme that you wanted to share for the group? 
Well, given that the public humanities and arts, like many of these themes, is ra you know, radically interdisciplinary, um, that some focusing in the internship phase absolutely the case, right? Say you have this kind of uh, literary interest um, and uh, with a uh, sort of interest in storytelling and so you're sort of join in, uh, you know, public radio uh, or podcasting, you know, there are ways to sort of focus your interest around your area. But I just wanted to mention about this sort of senior thesis question that um, Dr. Tuli and I share a student um, uh, who's currently in urban leadership equitas, but an English major. And so he's writing his senior thesis on this giant beast of a novel called Duck's Newburyport, um, allowing him to investigate urban in this brand new giant novel um, in a way that is he's trying to use it to get into graduate school, right? Uh, he's looking to make his first publication. And so like, these are really applicable uh, to his area of passion. Um, he is a sort of scholarly nerdy sort uh, who wants to go on in school. So it's a school focused project, but it really doesn't have to be, um, right? It can be as sort of um, applied as you'd like it to be in ministry contexts, um, in all kinds of contexts. So. Thanks for that. Um, I know given the time, we want to be mindful of your evenings or mornings, depending on where you are across the world. I thought we would end with Noel's question and give uh, Dean McGraw just another moment to share anything else you'd like to wrap up. Noel's question was, what are some ways that Equitas Fellows and the program is intentional about keeping Christ at the center of the program and experience? Dean McGraw, maybe you can share a little bit about that and then also close us out. Well, and uh, I'll finish just that with a couple next steps. Sure. Um, that's a great question. I mean, I think all of the all of the things that we are doing here at at, Col at Wheaton College um, try to emphasize the integration of faith and learning. And in each of the different sort of cohort themes, there are sort of structures built into the curriculum that uh, encourage, even sort of require students to wrestle with the ways in which the sort of the things that we believe, uh, the things we take to be true about God and the world, God in the world. Uh, really sort of interact, right? So that, um, you know, you, you hear Amelia sort of talking about sort of helping a, a ministry sort of figure out how to sort of best use its resources, how to best uh, best sort of implement its kind of ministries. Um, those are those where sort of where, you know, the, the kind of the scholarly work of mathematics and economics sort of intersects with sort of our calls to the to, to ministry around 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 the world. Um, and every every one of the themes has uh, central sort of parts of their educational efforts, sort of curricular efforts uh, to train students to think and to live indeed sort of uh, in light of our in light of our faith. Um, so just one one you can you can tell here, I hope I hope I hope what you're sort of can get a sense here is that uh, this is really a very distinctive kind of program. Um, you know, other schools, of course, have programs that are meant to sort of attract high achieving and top notch students, and there are there, there many of them are very, very, very good. Um, I think what's really great about this program is it it really creates these kind of intellectual communities centered around deep and important interdisciplinary questions, uh, where you can develop friendships, you can engage one another. Um, and you can sort of add on to your sort of uh, your Wheaton experience uh, this this sort of this this bit of sort of extra work, right? Extra sort of focus. Um, and uh, and I think you can see from the students, uh, the students sort of testimonials. Uh, it really is something special. And so we're we're really excited about the fact that we're able to expand this for next year. Um, and we'd love for uh, love for you to join us. Thank you, Dean McGraw. And thank you students for joining us for spending 45 minutes of your day learning, considering, and, and our hope getting excited about the Aquitas Fellows Program at Wheaton College. Just as a reminder, the two action steps for students to be considered for the Aquitas Fellows Program, apply for admission by January 15th and submit your interest form by January 15th as well. If you have further questions and you'd like to engage more, you can email us at admissions at wheaton.edu or at the interest form webpage. You can also learn more about the programs themselves, uh, interact more, and also find the contact information for our Equitas Fellows Program if you'd like to engage more deeply. Finally, go in peace. Enjoy your evenings or days, and we're really grateful for your interest, and we hope we get to know you throughout the Equitas Fellows Program. Take care. <laughs>